OK, what I have here is a Sanyo VTC M20 Betamax recorder, or beta cord I should say, as Sanyo calls it. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is change all its belts and its idler tyres. Um, I've got a belt kit, um, which I purchased from an eBay seller in Australia. The difference with this kit is, this kit includes the idler tyres, which you don't normally get with the belt kit. And as you can see on here, this covers um, basically all of the VTC M series and the VTC NX series as well. Also not shown on here is the NX30. Um, it's also suitable for that as well because all those machines, with the exception of the NX100 I believe, all use the exact same deck. Um, so, all I've done so far is I've just removed the top case screw, so there's just two screws on each side. And then the top cover should lift off from the back like that and give us access to the inside. But before I do that I'll just open up this belt kit and see what we actually get in here. Okay, I think that's everything. So what have we got here? We've got two idler tyres, which we will need, and a range of belts of various sizes. Five belts in total. I don't think we'll need all of them. But nevertheless, we shall uh, crack on and see how we get on. So the first thing I need to do is flip this circuit board out of the way so we can actually get at the mechanism. That's just one screw there. Oops. And one screw there. And then that hinges up out of the way and locks in position up there. Now I need to get rid of this screening plate, which is actually should be three screws. One there, one there, and one here. But um, someone's obviously been in here before me, and that screw there is missing. So we'll take these two out. And I think they're the wrong screws for there, actually, as well. So someone's been messing around in here before me, which is a little bit distressing. So that screw's missing. That should now come off. So we can now see two belts, one here to drive the loading ring and a second one down here which you can't actually see from that angle so I'll move the machine round. The second belt is down there. So if I remove this piece of insulating sheet from there you should, hopefully you can now see the uh, lacing ring belt down there. And that's the first one I'm going to change because that looks like one of the easiest ones to get at. So I'll just push that wire out of the way, give you a little bit of a better view. that one out. That's uh, gone perished. So the closest match for that belt from the kit I think is the third smallest so if you arrange them all in order of size, all five, it's the middle one for here. I think, before I do this, I think I'll give the pulleys a little bit of a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Right, I reckon that's good enough, so let's try and get this new belt on. Okay, that's over the pulley. I'll try and get it over the motor spindle now. Crikey, this is fiddly. Ah. Yes, on. That looks quite good. OK, next I'm going to do the idlers and the little belt that's underneath the idlers and to get at them I need to get this plate off the top here. Four screws, two at this end, two at this end.
Well, that one's. I can't quite get squared on that one, so what I'll do is just remove the front panel. It's fairly easy to do. Sometimes there's screws in here, but there isn't on this one, so it's just a question of lifting these flanges up, and then the front should just unclip. Hopefully that should give me slightly better access to this screw. Yeah, it's still not quite straight on, but it's better. Now I believe this is also held on by some little um, sort of pegs as well, so I'll just use a flat screwdriver just to gently prise it off. Should just pop off, there we go. Okay, so that now gives us good access to the idler pendulum here. Um, two idler wheels here and also a belt underneath there, all held in place by this little circlip on the top. So first thing to do is try and get that circlip off, hopefully without, um, without it pinging across the room. So I'm going to put my finger there to try and keep it from flying away and just slide it off. Oh, that's come off surprisingly easily. That didn't feel very tight, actually. OK, with that circlip removed, we should now be able to lift this idler pendulum off. So I need to unhook that belt from the motor spindle over there. That's the belt off. Lift this pulley off now. And hopefully this bottom pulley will come off as well. There we go. There's little washers in between all those bits I've just removed, so careful not to lose them. So here's all the parts I've just removed. Idler pendulum little pulley and the bottom idler and the bottom belt. So let's have a look in the belt kit and see if we can identify the two idler tyres. They look both exactly the same, so it's fairly obvious which those are. Now which belt do we want here? That one looks a little bit too small. Let's try the next size up. Oh, that one looks slightly too big to me. So given that this one has probably stretched, I'm going to say probably that's the smallest belt out of this kit is the right one for there. I will give this pulley a little bit of a clean. and I'll try and clean the motor spindle inside the deck as well. That's better. First of all, let's try replacing this idler tyre. Oh, that's quite difficult because it's on there quite tightly. Old. And new, there we are, that is on almost on. There we are, that is now on. Now this one's going to be tricky because this is spring-loaded so I need to be a bit careful here. I don't uh, overstretch those springs. Might be easier with a small screwdriver, perhaps. Because I'm not worried about damaging this tyre because it's damaged anyway. It's uh, perished anyway, so that's that off. Old. Now again, I've got to try and get the new one on without overstretching those springs. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, it's got it, I think. Got 
shot it and uh, haven't damaged the springs. There we go. That's the old belt. Let's put that in the old bits pile. Sorry, you probably can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just holding a cotton bud against the edge of the motor spindle while I spin the motor spindle round. There's a lot of muck coming off that look. Okay, so firstly, this little wheel goes back on. Oop, if I can get it onto its spindle without the spindle moving out of the way. Then the pulley. Yes. Little washer. There. Let's just push that down. It'll probably get pushed down when I put the idle pendulum on anyway. Now at this point I need to try and get the belt on. On. Seems to work okay. Now the fun part, the circle clip's got to go back on. Mm, that feels very, very loose. Is that even going to hold it? It does seem to be. Right, I think that's done. So now I'm going to replace this cover. To uh, just gently prise that apart, I think. In. Now, the final belt I've left till last because it's right down in there and there is not enough clearance to get the belt out between this pulley and that part of the loading mechanism there. So this one is going to be a bit of a nightmare to replace. If I remove the belt from the pulleys you can then see there's not enough gap in between that pulley there and that post sticking out of the side of the deck there. So there's no way of A getting that original belt out and B, getting the new belt in. Now, these cogs here, these cog wheels, uh, that pulley and the motor are all mounted on this bit of bent metal here, which I think is held on by two screws, one there and one down uh, nearly in the front panel there, going in that way into the cassette carriage mechanism. This one at the front looks virtually impossible to get at without some major disassembly of the machine. But the screw right down here, with a long screwdriver, you can actually get right through from this side of the deck and get onto that screw. So what I'm planning to do is, if I remove that screw at this side using a long screwdriver, hopefully this metal bracket will just flex out of the way enough for me to get the belt out and get the new belt in, in that gap there. Now. I'm not sure how critical the timing is on these cogs, so just to make sure I get them back in exactly the same position again, there's a little peg on the side of that cog there, which I'm going to set to dead center at the top. Now that flange is just offset slightly to the top of the screen as you look at it from straight. So on that one what I'm going to do is use a marker pen and just mark the cog that is at the top when it's in that position. 
So that's just to make sure, I don't know whether it's critical or not, but just to make sure we get it back in exactly the right position. So I've got my long screwdriver here, I'm just going to get a little bit of blue tack. Just put it on the end of the screwdriver because um, I'm not going to be able to get at the screw with my fingers. I can only reach it right at the end of the screwdriver, so if it does come all the way out, I don't want it to drop down into the machine. And also I'll probably need this method for um, getting the screw back in again afterwards. So if I pass the screwdriver right through here now, past all the uh, cables, so I'm just loosening the screw now. I'm not going to take it all the way out. There. Now I'll leave the screwdriver in position. Now, will that give me enough movement on this to be able to get that belt out? So can I bend that away enough to get the belt through? Ooh, possibly just. I'll get a nice firm hold of that belt. Yes, got it out. So here's the new belt. It's the second largest one from that kit, I think. It's about the closest one. Um, but before I do that, I'll give these pulleys a little clean. Same procedure in reverse here. But this is going to be even more difficult, I think, because I've got to try and stuff the new belt down in that little tiny gap. That I'm just creating by bending that out of the way. I think that might be easy to do with a screwdriver. I may end up damaging the belt slightly here actually, but it's still going to be a lot better than the original. Just try and push that through that gap. Oh, I think that's nearly through. Yeah, that's through. Yes, we've got it in position. Right, now Tighten this screw back up before I do anything else. Oop, there we are. Oh, unfortunately, that's left my bit of blue tack behind. That's okay, I can see the blue tack. I could probably just fish it out with this. There we are. That's got my lump of blue tack out of the way. Right, now we can attach the belt. Looks fine. Okay, moment of truth. The grand switch on. Oh, that looks good. Oh no, I haven't put the front panel back on, so which one's fast forward, that one? That looks perfect. Rewind. That looks perfect. Play. Bit screechy. That probably just means the tape path needs a bit of a clean. There we go. Job done. Okay, so I've um, given the whole tape path a good old clean with um, IPA cleaning solvent. Hopefully, that should get rid of that nasty screeching noise that it was making when I tested it earlier put the machine back together and hooked it up to a monitor. So this is the first test, see if we get a picture out of it. Moment of truth. In late June, the grass field in which the family is living is cut for hay. Has Looks pretty good to me, so let's try picture search forwards. Oh, 
Looks pretty good. Picture rewind. Looks pretty good. Still looks pretty good to me. Excellent. So there we are, fully working Sanyo VTC M20. Thanks for watching.